radicals contain unpaired electrons, symbolized by a single dot. Here's an X radical. Radicals are produced by homolytic bond cleavage. The covalent bond is a pair of electrons. When the bond splits in half and one of the electrons goes to one fragment of the molecule and the other goes to the other fragment, you produce a pair of radicals. Note that the curved arrows used in radical processes are different from the ones used in polar processes. On the left we have a double barbed arrow. This is the kind that we've used so far in polar processes, signifying the movement of two electrons. A single barbed arrow is called a fish hook. Look right here, it looks like the tip of a fish hook. And this signifies the motion of one electron. This is what we use for radical processes. A radical is halfway in between a carbocation and a carbanion. The carbocation is sp2 hybridized with an unfilled empty p orbital, whereas a carbanion is sp3 hybridized and the lone pair lives in an sp3 orbital. You can think of the radical as having an orbital that's between p and sp3 that is singly occupied. So you can think of it as either being trigonal planar or a shallow pyramid that inverts rapidly. In many ways it's very similar to a carbocation. Just like a carbocation, the more substituted the radical is, the more stable it is. And the mechanism for this is hyperconjugation. Where overlap of sp3 orbitals with the half-filled radical orbital stabilizes the whole molecule. Radicals are also stabilized by resonance. Here is an allylic radical. You can see it's in the allylic position because it is located on the carbon that is adjacent to a double bond. And you need three fishhook arrows to perform the resonance. The radical combines with one of the electrons from the pi bond to make a new pi bond. The other electron from the original pi bond becomes the new radical. Here is a benzylic radical. The pattern of curved arrows in the resonance for the benzylic radical looks very similar to that for the allylic radical. Those two electrons are forming a new pi bond, and this one is forming a new radical. How many other resonance structures can you draw? Pause your video and give it a try. See if you can get all of them. Then unpause it to see what I got. I get five resonance structures. Just the same as the number of resonance structures you get for a benzylic cation. Tabulated bond dissociation energies represent the energy needed to initiate homolytic cleavage. Hence, a lower bond dissociation energy means a more stable radical. You can see in this list breaking a vinylic hydrogen carbon bond costs the most energy at 464 kilojoules per mole. And then we have a smooth decrease as you um, go from vinylic to methyl to primary to secondary to tertiary you have 381 kilojoules per mole. Resonant stabilization of the allylic takes you down to 364 and then since benzylic has 
five resonance structures, that takes us all the way down to 356 kilojoules per mole. This is the same pattern as the stability for a carbocation.